So one of the critiques you hear from people is that, you know, socialism or communism is, is just meeting hell, hell, hell through meetings. But what's the reality then of, of like the assemblies in, say, El Panal or the workers' place? Like what level of assembly bureaucracy is there? Let, let's, let's talk about the assemblies in, because they are kind of different. Let's talk about the assembly in Indorca. I've been to two assemblies. Uh, they hold an assembly once a month. So it's not like all the time, just one half day assembly every month where everybody participates from the person who's at the, in the machinery, from the people who are the security, from the people to every, everybody uh, participates in these assemblies. And basically, in the case of Indorca, right now, there's about 45 workers. It's not a massive plant. It's for about 45, 50 workers. And they all sit the big table. And one of the people presents on the on a whiteboard. They write all the income and all the out, everything that has come in and everything that has come out. Totally 100% open accounting. And then... They see how the thing is going collectively and they set, decide the, the situation is very difficult. Actually, I should not, uh, I mean, the situation is very difficult because, because of the whole economic situation in Venezuela. And on top of that, because it's a worker controlled factory, some other capitalist enterprises do not want to hire the work of a factory that's under worker control for obvious reasons. So this is this this factory doesn't have it easy. These workers don't have it easy. But in the assemblies, they decide basically everything. Like what's their, their income going to be every month? Their income varies month to month depending on on what work comes into the factory. There's been some months that actually workers made no money, unfortunately, at the worst of the crisis. And there's months when they make more money. And they divided. They they decided collectively. They decide collectively. Well. Uh, we do need to fix this machinery or the bus or the gasoline. We need to put more money for the gasoline because the gasoline is very scarce. So they have to buy it on the black market and it's sold into the blockade. So there's all these decisions, these small decisions that have to be taken. Of course, also large decisions. Like while all the workers make the same, according to the law, it has to be a committee of three people. Uh, that's kind of like thought as a traditional capitalist enterprise direction. Three people who are the signatures. There's the president, the vice president, and the secretary, which is a, a kind of like normal confirmation of capitalist enterprises. So they have to vote who those people kind of like formally representing them in legal terms will be. So those decisions are also taken collectively in the assemblies. Uh, everything from like... If uh, there's not a lot of work, are they going to be uh, cut a couple of hours in the factory instead of being eight hours in the factory? Are they going to be at the factory just for six hours? What do they do? What, how do they rotate on the work? Because there's also rotational uh, responsibilities, etc., etc. All that is decided in the assembly. I mean, basically, I say I would say that in general terms, and what I have learned from going to a mini assembly from both communes and factories, the thing that I would say, that the thing that I would like to highlight is that actually they are not that different. Basically, what the side is, what they are going to do, how they are going to do it, what are they going to do with the surplus? What are their political objectives? What are their production objectives? Are they matching their goals? What do they have to do to match their goals? And how are they going to plan for the future work? And I could say that, that that's a synthesis of what an assembly is, both in the commune and the worker-run factory now, and the factory without bosses.